Hey, this is Dr. Kelly Cagle. And for season three, we're doing things a little differently because we know that a healthy and happy dad and mom starts with a healthy and happy husband and wife. So I decided to bring along my husband, Josh, as co-host so we could share some real life stuff of the ways that we learn how to fight to make our marriage thrive. You are listening to season three of the Parenting IQ podcast, Learning to Fight. Hello, Parenting IQ. We are here with episode 13 today and with Thanksgiving coming up and with the craziness of holidays, I wanted to, I approached Josh and said, hey, babe, why don't we talk about rest today? Mm -hmm. Because it's a time where people are so flustered with all of the gifts and get togethers and Josh is falling asleep. If you're watching on our channel, our YouTube channel at Dr. Kelly Cagle, then you'll see that. Um, you'll watch our face-to-face interaction, but so make sure that you subscribe to that, that you're watching the episodes that you're also subscribed to the podcast. Aside from that, we wanted to touch on the conversation of rest today, right? Yeah. So let's get started with what rest is. Mm, I think that's going to be something that you're going to know best, right? (laughs) Being the, um, the types of people that we are, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And I told them that a lot of this, I believe, has to do with introverts and extroverts because we, the key thing between the differences between those two people, the introverts and extroverts, is that they recharge differently. A lot of times people just think, oh, it's the quiet one. It's the loud one. It's the one that loves people, the one who doesn't. Mm -hmm. But it boils down to the charging, the recharging of that battery. And you, I will let you talk about yourself. How do you recharge? Well, I I think number one, whenever you think about rest, when you're a kid, um, you see rest as not fun. Mm -hmm. You know, you Mm -hmm. see it as this downtime, especially for me, I guess, you know, because you're always wanting to be on the go. You're always wanting to have as much fun as you can being with friends or whatever it might have been. I saw rest as a almost like time out. Like yeah. it was a punishment was a or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, and then the older you get, you see it as a weakness sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, That's you good. can, yeah. you know, well, I, I get up super early and I stay up till the crack of the, I don't need four hours of sleep and all these things. And we, we kind of define rest as just sleep mm-hmm. and we define it as, as this moment where, Hey, it's a weakness. If you think you need, you can't just go hard at it all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think whenever we really want to hone in on why would we fight for rest and number one, what is rest? I think we've got to understand that it is an essential piece of our being, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's part of our makeup. Yeah. God designed us this way to to be naturally who would have thought of sleep in the first place. You know what I mean? But then not only that, just understanding that, Hey, there's these times that you guys can't just go hard all 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 the way, mm-hmm. and so you'll crash and burn. You'll crash and burn. We've done that too, right? And so I think for me, I think I I look at rest as especially now that I'm a little older, as having to make sure that number one, I'm identifying it. You know, mm-hmm. hey, listen, I need to incorporate this into my daily or for sure weekly mindset. And, uh, and then act upon it because rest is not just something that's going to happen. You actually, to, <laughs> to get rest, you almost have to take action if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Well, and then going back to the point that I was making about the introverts and extroverts is that, for example, I think that you're looking at rest from kind of like an internal thing. But I think that if you look at rest at, after a Friday that you worked all, all week and then you come home, a lot of times what I want to do is nothing. I don't want to see anybody. I want to just put on my PJs, take a hot shower, and then just sit on the couch, I don't know, pizza or something like that, and just watch a movie where we don't even have to interact with one another. But for you, if I have a little burst of energy and I'm like, hey, I would love, because I'm, I'm an introvert, by the way, people are always shocked to hear that. But it's the internal things that you don't know, that you don't hear about, that go on inside of people 
never judge a book by its cover. So you never judge just because I talk for a living doesn't mean that I am an extrovert. That's just kind of a mis, you know, misunderstanding. That's true. Yeah. But you, at a any Friday, doesn't matter what kind of week you've had, I can say, hey, so and so asked to hang out. You want to go grab burgers? And you're like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You're not drained by by people at all. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest different differentiator of an introvert and extrovert. So I think it's really important for you to sit and sit back and analyze yourself. Like you were saying, yes, prioritize it. Know that it's not a sign of weakness. But in addition to that, what, how do I, Josh, how do I, Kelly, feel like I recharge? What mm -hmm. drains my battery? What recharges my battery? So you can kind of tend to that because if we were the opposite, then, you know, you could just come to me and I say, no, not today. I'm done. You know, just that openness and that awareness is so important. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with what you're saying there, you know, but I think so many times we have to just number one, uh, just stop and, and understand that, Hey, uh, this is part of our, you know, almost diet, if you will, mm -hmm. yeah, that's we, good. We, we need to contribute rest into our mm -hmm. daily or lifestyle yeah uh why should we fight for rest mm, why should we fight for rest yeah why do we need it um well i mean i think uh whenever you think about needing to fight for rest i think whenever you get to where you might start being I mean, i'll just say it this way okay so let's say that you watch your kids for example and they we're at a friend's house and well, what'd y'all do? Well, we stayed up till two in the morning and, and then they got up early and they're, you know, they come to us and they're on such an adrenaline high and they had so much fun and all these things. And then before you know it, you know, they go the whole day or even the next day, because sometimes the stuff catches up on yeah. you and they start ending up being very short with you or with their brothers or you know themselves mm -hmm. and i think what we need to understand is is that's where uh rest without it it breaks you down mm -hmm. you know you you probably don't even realize it you know you're just completely or you're slowly getting depleted of energy mm -hmm. and so your body's trying to overcompensate and your emotions get kind of out of whack so sometimes i think that's where it's just so important that when we find ourselves in those moments you're almost be uh, best to just go try to go to bed. Yeah. Well, and it's super interesting because you mentioned this a little while ago that we were kind of created this way for rest, for sleep. God did, did it this way. And then it's really an act of obedience is what it boils down to. If we were to look at the Ten Commandments and we're going to go to Exodus 20 real quick, verses 8 through 11, and it says... Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You mm -hmm. have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock and any foreigners living among you. For in six days... The Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. So everything was created in six days. Mm -hmm. But then on the seventh day, he rested. That's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. And so he led it for us. And he said, you know what, guys? And of course, he's all powerful and we are not. But he said, I'm, I will create everything in six days and tell you and, and really model this for you, just like we say all the time that we're modeling to our children, that our children mirror what we do. Mm -hmm. God did it for us. He exemplified what he wanted us to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. Get everything done in six days, but on the seventh day, you turn it off. Yeah. Well, he taught us rest. And that's why it's so funny. I think about our little kiddos when they were first born, how you had to teach them almost their sleep routine, you know, and mm -hmm. try to get into those different habits. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's very important. I like the word you just brought up habit. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that you can get out of habit with your rest. Again, I think we don't even see it 
in this culture, especially as mm-hmm. a strength. So why even consider mm-hmm. it a habit? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Uh, a lot of times, whenever we think about strengths of habit, we think about eating correctly mm-hmm. or exercising, physical working mm-hmm. out, right? Those type of things. Um, we talk about rest, but doing it is mm-hmm. a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are some of the things as you and I were talking, we were kind of dissecting some of the things that keep us from resting. And the very first thing that came up was worry. Mm -hmm. And even whenever we are trying to rest, and I know this for a fact, because, you know, we, I run our ministry. And so whenever I've, I've turned off the computer, I, a lot of times haven't turned off my mind. It's still going. Yeah. The worries, the tasks, the things that have to be done, the things I need to write, record, blah, blah, blah. You just name it. You know, the worry never stops. Same thing for you. You work all day. The work's still there. There's yeah. there are, there's a plethora of things that still have, still have to get done. But somehow you have to turn it off. But worry, even when we're trying to rest, sometimes it's still like a nagging thing in our minds. Absolutely. No, I think, I think worry is the enemy of rest. Um, and I think whenever we think about rest, what are we doing and why would worry be the enemy? And I, I go to the word faith because I think faith, whenever we think about trust, we almost are called when we trust to relax. Mm. You're trusting That's good. in, in something greater than your influence. And And so whenever we decide that we're going to not worry, we're basically choosing trust. And whenever we're choosing or faith and whenever Mm -hmm. we're doing that, we should rest in that choice. Yeah. yeah. And so the, and, and that choice can be, Hey, I have done my best in this day or I've laid it all out on the table Mm -hmm. and I've put in the time, the effort and the energy. And so now I need to be satisfied with those things and close that chapter or close those thoughts so that we can kind of interject into the time that we do have, whether it's together with our family or even just in our alone time needing to get ready for bed or whatever it might be. Um, You know, I believe that that's what we need to make sure that we're entering into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Another thing we agreed to was being overcommitted that that keeps us from resting sure. over commitments. Yeah. I mean, I think about it with our work. Uh, a lot of times whenever all of our guys and stuff, when we're uh, sometimes at our worst, it can be that we're overcommitted. You mm-hmm. hear that term overcommitted and under delivered. Mm-hmm. And sometimes whenever you are the, uh, find yourself saying yes to all these things, I'll never forget. I was talking to a guy and he, he mentioned something to where, if you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something yeah. else. And whenever we say yes to all these things, we're saying no to all these other things. Mm-hmm. And are we defining what our yeses and nos are? Yeah. Because so many times our yeses can be defined by um, trying to do, I think, r- good intentions. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, we're only, our capacities are limited. Yeah. You know, we live and limited time. We don't have unlimited time mm-hmm, in a day and mm-hmm. all these things. So we need to be disciplined with our rest. I yeah. think it's a very, very vital mm-hmm. tool. Yeah. And it's really important too. just mentioned a second ago about our kids are always watching, mirroring all the things we're modeling for them. And if we are saying yes to all of the commitments that come up, and and a lot of times they're good things. Right. There there are so many good things. And I've I've told people before when I've done coaching with people, I've told them, I said, you know, sometimes saying no, even no to a good thing is the best answer. Because in your life, what season you're in, and it could even be that it's just for this month, I need mm-hmm. to say no to this thing. For example, serving at church. It's a wonderful thing. Churches need their volunteer squad to make every single Sunday work. Mm-hmm. I We know that we both serve at our church and always have yeah. at every church we've been in, we have served. And, but at the same time, we've also entered seasons in our lives where when I was getting my PhD, that, that, that was 
just impossible. There was no way we had a nursing baby. I was getting my PhD and every ounce of energy. If I said yes to that, to a good thing, I was saying no to rest, Yeah, which it was also necessary for our survival, for our marriage, for our kids, you know? So I just, just an encouragement there, an encouragement piece there that sometimes saying no with this overcommitment, even if it's to a good thing, even if it's to your best friend, even if it's to a family member, whatever that is, sometimes that is a good answer. Well, and, and even as we're getting close to these holidays and why would we start wanting to even introduce rest? You would think, well, I've got to get all the Christmas lights. I've got to go, mm-hmm. you know, get all the Christmas decorations done, get all the gifts, um, all the, all the different planning that takes place of the parties, mm-hmm. the family get togethers, the traveling, potentially all these things. They're so fun. Uh, it's a blur. Mm-hmm. And I think we just want to, you know, encourage each and every family here to enter into this season, not with this overwhelming, oh my gosh, I got to get all these things done. But as you and your husband or your wife are trying to structure your holiday season, do it with intentionality of, hey, we're going to soak this in, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're going to live in these moments. We're going to engage one another. We're going to engage our family. And we're going to uh, take the time to be thankful during this Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. season. We're going to take the time to celebrate during the Christmas season, right? And, and we're going to rest. We're going to, and whenever we say rest, sometimes it's not just going to bed yeah. or vegging out. It's remaining. Mm. What rest is, is it is remaining in a calm state. So mm-hmm. it's the opposite, like we were saying, of worry. But whenever we are deciding to rest, we're going to remain calm. Mm-hmm. We're going to remain present and we're going to remain. And, and it's almost funny. It's still an action. Yeah. Right? We're yeah. having to engage yeah. in rest. Like mm-hmm. you said a minute ago with the Sabbath day, it's to keep it holy. That is an action. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So we are going to actively rest. Yeah. So therefore we have to decide how do we want this to look not only in our individual lives, but in our family, because our kids will follow suit. Mm-hmm. They need to be taught just like your little baby when they're born. You know, they don't know that they're born in the middle of the night. Yeah. You have we to teach that, them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, those certain times of, hey, no, this is when I want you to wake up. This is when you need to eat. This is all this Mm -hmm. stuff. We're teaching you how to manage your time. Yeah, yeah. And I think whenever you were talking about, um, I don't know, you said a word, uh, remain. You said the word remain. And a word, a book that I read, the kids, Titus was just born, so... I had, we, whenever we just had Levi, mm-hmm. Levi was always like his outfits always matched. His fingernails were always trimmed. His hair was always done. There was never any stains. His shoes were always new. Like he, cause he was our only one. Sure. And then Titus came along and it was still this management of, right. Cause Levi was already five by the time Titus was born. So mm-hmm. then he was wiping his own booty and bathing himself, whatever, brushing his own teeth. So we, then we started doing this whole thing. Right then, I read a book called Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nequist. And I remember there was one example in particular that where she was talking about she's got two sons Mm -hmm. and she's sitting outside, took the lawn chair outside, propped it up and watch or is watching the boys play basketball in the evening when she could really be doing all the dishes, washing clothes for the day and all of the tasks that remain. That never goes away. Wow. The to-dos never go away. Yeah. But then she was like, but instead of me trying to be perfect, I'm being present with yeah. my sons. Amen. You know, I think about just then Mary and Martha in the Bible where they mm-hmm. talk about Martha was over in the kitchen with all the to-dos. Very similar story yep. with what you're saying, but Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. She was resting in his presence. Yeah. You know, she was remaining engaged with him. Um, Obviously, that's never going to take away with all the things we need to get done. Mm -hmm. We can't, you know, do like the old school bewitched. You probably don't even know what that is, but bewitched, you know, where they could, (laughs) you know, twinkle the nose and all of a sudden things, they either go into a different area or things are done, this, that, and the other, the magic that takes place. There's no, there's no, we're not, you know, getting our 
dishes done just in Snappy. this magic like format. But anyways, I think as we, uh, what we're trying to represent here to all of you is to know that it is, it is a beautiful thing if we can all take that activity of rest and apply it into our lives because we want our lives, I think we all do, to be our best self. Yeah. And so how can we be our best self each and every day, not just once a year or, or whatever yeah. it is, but each and every day? And so how can we break down our family, our, our daily activities, to where we're incorporating some of just mm -hmm. a little bit. It doesn't even have to be mm -hmm. a ton of time, right? So then let's define how can we rest? You, you, we've really kind of sprinkled this all throughout our conversation today, but you said one that's super simple and we practice this all the time. Yeah. Take a deep breath. I tell our boys, y'all just all right now, take me a deep breath. Just mm -hmm. You learned that from your grandpa. I did. From he actually told me, um, he said, when, when I was growing up, to, he always encouraged me to take three good deep breaths a day. And, um, you know, it's so engaging into, you're just checking in. Mm -hmm. I think it, it kind of lets you know that, that worry that might be happening or just the, okay, hey, it's time to so look at this. This past weekend, we mm -hmm. had Mom IQ. Yeah. Right. So, so many of the listeners were there and I'm so grateful. I hope that you had the best time and it was really impactful in your life. I know that I'm forever changed, but one of the, the speakers that we had was Katie Brooks. Woo. And I know, and she is, has been a yoga teacher for over a decade, but she's also trauma specialist, trauma specialist. She's a counselor and she taught us on the breath. And I thought about you the whole time. Because although Papa didn't teach you why you take deep breaths, he just said it's this connection thing. We learned this past weekend the the scientific reasons mm. for the breath and what happens to the nervous system, how it's connected from like it goes from your brain all the way down your spine, connects your I mean, like all of this, this this whole thing. God created our body so beautifully mm -hmm. that all sometimes that it takes for us to have a reset is our breath. Yeah. Well, if we allow about, it to think about what the word says, he breathed into his nostrils and there was life, Yeah. you know? So again, you guys just take those moments. And I love that because you're right in the yoga uh, setting, there is a lot to do with breath, mm -hmm. with breathing. And, and so much of yoga is to that inner calmness yep. stillness that peace if you will mm -hmm. um and so i think i think it is very very mm -hmm. important and that is one good strategy and it can be done anywhere because rest it doesn't mean that you have to be off work that your kids have to be in bed that you have to be showered rest can literally happen in the middle of a stressful meeting mm -hmm. that you're getting burned that you're getting chewed out or you just got to know a job offer that you thought you had nailed that you just got turned down, whatever in any environment we teach Levi that it can be in the middle of a soccer game. Sure. I talk about what he does when he gets overwhelmed. We work through these things. These are strategies that we use on a daily basis and that breath can be, it's a game changer. It can, and it can be done anywhere, Yeah, anywhere. Yeah. So utilize that just there's something she Katie also taught us about the box breath, which we learned that in yoga, but she she taught all of our mamas there, which by the way, you guys, since we're talking about mom IQ, save the date for 2024 mom IQ September wow. 7th, Saturday, September 7th is so mark your calendars too. No, I'm going to actually be on vacation. Dads, dads. Else. Okay. Well take the boys. Uh -oh, <laughs> I don't care. Uh -oh. I don't care what you do. Uh -huh. <laughs> you just got the kids. <laughs> um, but September 7th is when we're going to be meeting once again for our annual mom IQ event. Okay. So the box breath is what I was talking about that. It's a four count in breath. So you take a deep breath counting to four, then you hold your breath for four for a four count. Then you exhale with a four count. And then at the bottom of your breath, you hold it again for four mm -hmm. counts. And that's called box breath. And that kind of just, make, even that awareness, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Uh, when I'm driving, I'm stressed out. Whenever the kids hear me all the time and they see the mom's breathing. Yeah. So it's a very easy strategy mm -hmm. that you can apply to 
rest yeah. wherever I think you are. An, I think another strategy, um, you know, that we should incorporate is, is, you know, the, obviously when we were talking earlier about the Sabbath and, and what that actually means, and that is taking a day, um, mm-hmm. to, to basically kind of move away from every activity that the world's called us into mm-hmm. and try to, you know, filter that time for just the, uh, the family. Mm-hmm. I think it is very important for us to honor that. I mean, obviously it's biblical. Um, but at the same time, I think so many, uh, of our lives can be like, ah, that's, that's old school stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I don't need that or, mm-hmm. or old Testament. Yeah. Well, or, or, or it could just be that, yeah, that they honestly think that they can find rest in watching movies, this, that, and the other. And there is that veg out mentality. But I think whenever the Lord's calling us to understand what that Sabbath day even looks like, I think that that word that we were talking earlier about faith is we're taking this day, okay? And we're going to recognize what you did, like you said, in those six days. That yeah. takes that yeah. takes number one, being thankful mm-hmm. as we're getting into this time. It, it, it takes an action of being thankful mm-hmm. and trust of, hey, I might have not felt like I got everything done. Yeah, God, you you yeah. did get everything done <laughs> yeah, in six right. days, but I feel like I needed a seventh, but I'm trusting you in my humanity and my weaknesses that yeah. you're going to make a way and exponentiate yeah. my next six days. Yeah. Right. I love that because that also brings us to what I wanted to close with as we were Talking about this, the Lord took me to Matthew 6. Well, he didn't say go to Matthew 6. He said, he threw, get me a verse. And I said, oh, where is Google? It's a beautiful thing. Let's just Google, where is this verse? But in Matthew 6, verses 28 to 33, it's Jesus's words. And he's telling us, and why worry about your clothing? And that's that seems so like, for guys especially, like your clothing but I think that you're... Are you talking about my Louis Vuitton, everything that I'm wearing right now? <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, like for girls, we care more about clothes. You guys yeah. don't. But to me, it just shows like provision. Like you need clothes. You can't. We're not Adam and Eve. We can't just walk around. But why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Here's the word you're talking about. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. That's well, well, you know what, you know what just spoke to me when you said this is the word dominate. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never honestly probably listened to that that well Mm -hmm. and got a lot going on in my own life Mm -hmm. right now. And I think the Lord just spoke to me, you know, about that, that word dominate your thoughts. And I think what God's trying to say to all of us is, is, Hey, you know, um, listen, yeah. you know, take a moment and listen, let that peace be still. God's given us a beautiful life of things to, if, if we want to just mm-hmm. really, really take what he's given us and apply it. And I, you know, we don't need to be dominated by these thoughts, The worries. Yeah. you know, he doesn't want that for us. He just said that, yeah. right. They will dominate your thoughts. And so we all know all of us, we, we have our needs. We're, we're needy, right? All yeah. of, we, that's why, and God knows that. He understands that. I think we all need to just know that and understand we're needy people. It doesn't matter how much money, how much fame, whatever, you're still going to have needs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think inside that, we, we are here to encourage you guys as well as ourselves yeah. to um, say, hey, you know, I'm not going to allow my thoughts to be dominated by the ways of this world. I am going to uh, have that, have that faith enough to rest, mm-hmm. you know, and just truly, truly um, seek God seek to me. God. Yeah. Amen. Because it says seek the kingdom mm-hmm. above everything else and live righteously. And he's going to give you what you need. Yeah. 
So we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. We don't have to doubt in the season of busyness. Just make sure that you seek God above all else because he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of your kids, all of your needs, your family drama, whatever it is. If you seek him, he's going to meet you there. Go so, get some rest. That's right. We'll see you next week, guys.